it and shot me. I don't think it will with your clothes on. It acts as an insulator. Are you five day? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys, today, the best time to weigh a pig is when they're eating. And Izzy girl here, fortunately, they're, they're used to us being around them. But I'm going to take my measuring tape, and she's 45 inches around. So you do 45 times 45 from the top of her tail to her ears times 51. 45 times 45 times 51. Divided by 400. Divided by 400. Where do you get 400? I don't know. That's the equation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the equal? He's not going to be eating forever. 258. Woo, girl. Good girl, Miss Izzy. All right. 258. All right. So now we got to get pork chop. Okay. He's our feeder. He's our little short feller, though. He's the one we want to weigh a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And our pigs may be a little overfed. All right, he looks like 44. So you do 44 times 44. And I'm glad they're used to us because times 40, times 43, I believe. Uh, is it 43? 44. What oh. was it? 44. What was the first number? 44. Everything was 44. Everything was 44. So what are you measuring? Times So 44. you measure his girth. We're around the back of his front legs. You do that measurement times that same measurement times whatever he is from the ear back from the top of the, from right here at the ear <laughs> to the top of his tail. And I mean, it's 43, 44. Yeah, 44. Yeah, 44. 44. Yeah. All right. Well, divided by 400. And then you divide it by 400. It's 212. 212 pork chop. Good job, buddy. Mm. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of belly right there. Look at them hams. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some good bacon there. Poor old pork chop. Right, it's no. going to be hard to take him to the processor, I'll tell you. So. And if you guys are raising for the first time and you need to get a processor, <laughs> make sure you plan ahead. Uh, butchers, processors, they have roughly, at least down here, about a six-month waiting line. Six, eight months, uh, ten months. I mean, it's, it's so, hard to get in, guys, so plan out ahead. That's roughly the lifespan of your, of your feeder. Now we are going to take you along and show you when we fill up their feed bucket, show you how we feed them. You can see they're, they're really big, beautiful, healthy pigs. These are Idaho pasture pigs. And I believe they were born in April. Wasn't it April? I meant to look before yeah, I came out I, here. Yeah, it was about April. So it means they're like eight, nine, nine months old. Let me see here real quick. Because I know I had it on here for picking them up. Isabel and Pork Chop born April 19th. Hey, oh, you so should kind of remember that. Why? It's near our anniversary. How many birthdays do we stuff we have going on in April? <laughs> anyway, April 19th is when they were both born. So they are almost nine months old. And she's 258 and he was 219. Yes. Is that right? No, 212. 212, that's right. 258 and 212. So they are doing, look at that belly. Poor pork chop. Now, if you guys don't know anything about IPP, they're a blend of three other breeds. What breeds are they? They are, they're a registered breed and they are uh, Cooney Cooney, Duroc, and Berkshire. Yep. And, uh, we aren't registered breeders yet, but we will be. We've got a boar coming at the end of this mm -hmm. month, finally. And we're going to get another feeder because, anyway, it's supposed to happen earlier and we should be breeding her right now. But, uh, anyway, it didn't work out, so we're a little behind. So we're going to have another feeder because it'll be a while before we have piglets. Mm -hmm. 
um, and to be able to have a, you know, be able to raise our, a, a feeder of our own. Now, I do think we've been, we have backed off on the food just a little bit here lately because, I don't know, that's a lot of belly. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so far we've been just watering them with these two pails. We would like a little bit better watering system. Um, we, we tried the little spout thing on a five gallon or a 50 gallon bucket, 55 gallon. 55 gallon drum. Yeah, and uh, that didn't work out. So in the summer when it's hot, we have to fill them about three times a day. But this time of year, we're out here twice a day feeding them and, and, and filling the buckets and they last beautifully. So it works for now. Izzy, look, you want some water? She is too worried about food right now. Izzy, Izzy girl, ow! Shot me that time. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, come on girlfriend, we should have done this to start with, shouldn't we? Look Izzy, you want some water? You want some water? Come on, take some water. Come on, help me out here. It's We're like, trying to show our, our followers. She's like, Mama, there's food here. I'm sorry to ignore you, but. Says, I'm going to make a liar out of you. Now, on the Idaho pasture pig, we're still, we're learning about the composition um, of the pigs, but you want a nice big hams on the back side, nice straight legs, and their nose, you don't want it to be too long or straight. It needs to have like a dish on the end or it upturns just a little bit. And when they're piglets, um, from what we're learning, it's the more wrinkles on the nose, the better the sign. It, it, that's a really good sign that it's going to be. And as long as they have that dish on the end and lots of wrinkles, that it's going to be a good nose. Come here, Izzy, get some water. Come on, you're so cute. I want to show everybody all your cuteness. Yes, because you're just beautiful. Here you go. Okay. We're going to have to catch her later, y'all. Because <laughs> she has got a one-track mind, and it's not water. <laughs> So let's go refill this food bucket and get them ready for tonight. Well, actually, this will be for tomorrow morning. Okay, so we have two buckets. We have a morning and the afternoon bucket. And we did, we, I just drew a little sun and a little moon on there to let, let us know which one is which so we don't get them mixed up. And the reason why we have morning and afternoons is because we put our feed in here and we add water to it and it lets it ferment for 24 hours. So like we just fed the pigs, we emptied the bucket, rinsed it out, and then Andrew's brought it in here and he, he knows just how much water yep. to put in it. Yeah, there's about two, two to three inches of water in there. Now this is something that's gone through trial and error. Um, we ended up with too much water, not enough, enough water, water, and we he's got it, he's got it pretty much figured out now. Yep. So it's trial and error, guys. Yes. But the pigs won't care. So once we get the water in there, we have the feed. Now we just have a measure cup. This is about one one pound per cup. Uh, each pig gets three pounds of feed a day. We have two pigs, so six pounds total. But you got two pigs, so it's. Three pounds, three pounds per in the morning, morning three, three pounds, pounds at in the night. evening. Yep. So it's three cups in the morning. And we just, he just pours it in there. Oh, honey, go ahead, do it all, and then we'll show them what you got added in there. One oh. more. That's only two. Can you see any pellets in there? This is what we have for our feed. Now, of course, you got your, your, your pig food here, but these red pellets are calf manna which gives them extra supplements and minerals that they need. And along with the minerals that we add, 
Okay, now once it gets the feed in the water, we just take our minerals that we, it comes in a big old bag. Now we get it from Azure Standard, and I'll leave a link to it below. We have had, you've seen our pigs. They look real, they're super healthy. They're shiny. Um, we do add eggs from our ducks into our feed as well. And uh, but anyway, we just take it and we don't measure it. We literally, and we do it with every bucket. Just give a light sprinkling over the top. And uh, they, they've done really, really well. And we do add raw eggs in there. And we had our breeder that we're getting our boar for tell us that he had heard somewhere along the way that our raw eggs can affect fertility. Um, he said, I don't know if it's so. He said, but like if you want to... Um, when you get ready to breed them, you may want to boil them. So I, I don't know that to be so, guys, but it's something to consider or look into if you're at that stage or, or want to get into okay. pigs. So, but we give them fresh eggs when we go out to get our chickens' eggs. We'll give them, uh, we throw the whole shells and everything in there. And we don't feed them meat, but like if we nope. have leftovers, you know, vegetables or rice or potatoes, anything like that. From um, we will like because it has olive oil. We cook with olive oil, butter, all natural products and things. Uh, we cook from scratch. We do. We'll throw them in there. We typically don't have leftovers because we like to eat our leftovers. Mm -hmm. But if there's anything extra, and scraps like pulling off uh, leaves out in the garden, you know, when you're cleaning up the garden, they love that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's it. That's yeah. all we do. And we'll just, this bucket is going to sit here until in the morning. And this bucket, let's show you, this one's really soaked up the feed, honey. You want to yep. take that and show that to them? And that's what it looks like. You see how it swells up? Right. You see that dark ring? That's, that, that's, the, that's the minerals on top. But see, it just kind of... But you see it? And it, it's it just, they really like, they seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, they like this texture. Now, we, when you buy pig food, <laughs> are you messy? I'm when messy. When you buy pig food, you can get pellet or I think they call it, don't they call it mash or something? Right, yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, so we get the ground up because, I mean, that way we're going to add in water to it anyway. And it just, you know. Crumbles. It, uh, yeah, it crum crumb. Is that what it is? It just crumbles. I don't know. But anyway, it absorbs the water really well. So that's it, y'all. That's how we feed our piggies. Now, guys, if you saw our last video, it was all about uh, caring for your chickens, feeding them, how to the general maintenance to keep healthy, healthy chickens. And, uh, well, since then... <laughs> You know, we record ahead of time. It doesn't always fall just as it happens. But since then, we've discovered that we have a couple with ear infections. Now, who would have thought? Chickens with ear infections, right? Well, there is a site on Facebook or a Facebook page, and it's called Poultry Veterinarian, I believe it is. I'll try to, I'll, I'll try to figure out a, a link. I'll get a link to it, and I'll put it in the description box below for you because there's a lot of groups out there, as you know, and I, I, you know, I'm really involved with a lot of group, uh, goat groups, and people just give all this advice, and it just, it's disturbing. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Yeah, they, you know, they, they tell a lot of stuff, and they, they think it's right, and then people go, and I just, it disturbs me. So, anyway, this is a really good site, and I don't know it all, but I'm not going to tell you <laughs> something unless I feel really good about it. So anyway, but I was looking in there and there was all like giving them antibiotics, taking them to the vet. This one person took them to the vet. They gave them this antibiotic. It didn't work. They gave them a stronger antibiotic. And uh, I like to treat them naturally whenever I can. And we're not going to take a chicken to the vet. We're just, we're just not. So um, we're trying to treat them ourselves. Now, will you get Biff? I will. Grab Biff. This is the sweetest rooster. And I take that back. I'll... We had another one too, and I, we had extra roosters, and his name was Jelly Bean, and we gave him to a friend of ours, and uh, she loves, she does her Zoom meetings with Jelly Bean on her lap. But anyway, this is Biff, and uh, he is sweet as pie. Aren't you a sweetheart? Yes, yes, you are. These are our lavender Americanas. Now, his ear, I didn't bring the tweezers out. Oh, uh, and I maybe should have. 
We had to get take the tweezers that we use on the animals. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, baby. And we had, because the way the, the stuff is coming, his drainage in his ear, it was drying all up. Oh, there we go. Yes, there it is. Okay. It was drying all up and the, it wasn't able to drain. So <clears throat> I've just got some peroxide here and I do not put it in his ear. I'm not pouring it in his ear. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I just swallowed wrong. Hang on, buddy. The ears are really sore. As you, you know, as we all know what an infection feels like. But we're really just trying to keep all, keep it open. Hang on, baby. I know, I know, precious. I know. We need to trim that hair some more, Drew. We do. Well, and keeping it open allows the uh, fluid to drain out. Right. So that way it won't continue to get all you know, to get worse and worse and worse is what we're hoping. Um, I want to do that one just a little bit more. So, you can see that hair. I am going to, tonight when we do this again, I'm going to trim that hair some more. But you can see, can you see that? I'm not sticking it in his ear. I'm just right there around the outside, softening up that gookie. And then any of that, I'm hoping that peroxide I know, Precious. You're a sweet, sweet boy. You know that? Yes, you are. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing to the other ear. And I need to look at that side because I don't even know if it's... Oh, see how it's all... He's really got it bad. Hang on, baby. I know, Precious. I know. Yes. I know. And yes, I should probably be... I should probably wear gloves when I do this. I think I will tonight. Because I have did just wash my hands, but I don't want to add any bacteria. That ear is really bad. Yep. And you see the foam from the peroxide, having it foam up there as it works against that bacteria. Yep. So, with it being what it is, and I'm going to do some more research with maybe some more natural ways. I know, Angel. I know, Precious. Mm -hmm. I know. To see if we can help them. But one thing I am doing, I've got some um, sourdough discard here. I've got this little dog bolt because there are automatic feeders in there. It's just a narrow little sweat. And I just don't want to get the sourdough starter or um, discard all stuck to the side of the pail. So we put some feed in here. We put the sourdough discard over the top. And uh, I know, precious. And they, they love it. Biff, I don't know. You probably won't want it right now because you just want down, don't you? But um, anyway, because it's full of good bacteria. So I'm hoping if I can help, I've got vitamins in their bucket. You the don't. vitamins I showed y'all. Yes. <laughs> not, not, uh, baby, he's this oh, little yep, yep. Right <laughs> wrong, wrong cage, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wrong breed of chicken are out in the fence in area today. So, but anyway, um, but I did the, I'll, I'll put a link to the vitamins for you below and uh, as well their buckets full of vitamin water and then i'm gonna give them this and hoping to really help to build the immune system give them lots of good bacteria to maybe help fight that bad bacteria okay little girl are you ready huh are you a ookie butt too <laughs> Oh, you don't. You don't look near as bad as your as your husband. Hmm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, your your ears are still open. That one is anyway. Let me see this other side. You know, I was telling you how chickens with um, feathers on their feet are more likely to get mites on their legs. 
And, uh, well, you know what? We're learning. That one here looks so open. You can see the dried stuff on the outside, but it looks so much better. So much better. So I am hoping. And she doesn't smell. You can tell when they're affected. You can get this, oh, this yeah. that kind of a putrid smell. <laughs> <laughs> this one you can tell is sore much sore for her. but I'm very gentle I'm not I know girly you're so sweet yes you are Americanas they're just the sweetest chicken I have ever come across but anyway there we go so we'll do it again tonight and uh, you can see she does it you know look at her, her comb yeah, her, is pale we first noticed that they, they just weren't acting right uh, she was always hesitant she was last to leave wouldn't leave the roost very much yeah she's staying on the roost just Much. not as active. Yeah. Everybody else would be down play. Even Biff, he's got the worst ear infections, but we really couldn't even tell he was sick. <laughs> hey, dirty birds. You can tell we got more chickens in this pen. They mess it up in a hurry. All right, kids. It's time to refresh. It's time to refresh. Y'all gonna stay back here, huh? You better move. Scoochie. Y'all are crazy. Come on, little heifers. <laughs> In the chicken video, too, I talked about refreshing the, uh, the pens, like this time of year. Now, if it's hot summertime, I'd pull out that, uh, like underneath the, um, the roost, because they do a lot of business while sleeping because there's like a row of it and then the rest of it is just kind of here and there but with it being winter still i just add fresh on top and then in the spring when we clean the pens all this man we're going to get tons of really good stuff for the compost and your garden's going to love you for it and your pocketbook's gonna love you for it when you hadn't got to go buy more compost <laughs> from the landscape place. <laughs> Which I, after this, we are headed to just that very place because we, Papa, Papa Drew, <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that on the channel before, Papa Drew. That's what all the grandkids know him as, Papa Drew. They were so cute when a million blaze were real little. Amelia would call him Papa Do. Wasn't it? Amelia did Papa Do and Blaze because they called you Papa Roo. I believe so. <laughs> it was so cute. Ah. But anyway, we're going to head into the landscape place to get some dirt because Andrew has built a bed out front, a nice big bed because we're supposed to be getting some asparagus. I think 25 uh, crowns of asparagus this week and we'll be planting. But first we got to fill that bed with dirt. All right, guys, that is it for today. Now, don't forget, check out our description box below. I'm going to have you some helpful videos mm -hmm. down there that we've talked about. Link them over for you. Some products that we all talked about as well. If you ever have any questions or comments, please be sure and leave them in the comment section below. And give us a big old thumbs up. If you have stayed to the end of this video, we really need those thumbs up. It really helps our algorithm with YouTube and it helps them kind of put us out front so people will get their attention and, and hopefully watch our channel. Because we are here building our homestead from scratch and our goal is to help you in your journey of the same thing, building yep. your homestead or just trying to live a more 
self-sustainable lifestyle. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, guys, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you along yep. here on the homestead and on our journey. And uh, we'll be straight with you. Okay, y'all. Until next time. <laughs> Take care. And God bless.